Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. Stay tuned for this week's episode and thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the PR Maven podcast. I am the PR Maven. I've been working in PR for many, many years now, and I have a special interest in personal branding. And today we have a guest who has done an amazing job of building his personal brand, Christian Espinoza. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, Nancy. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so I'll say Christian and I met last year while we were both participating in heroic public speaking. So both of us are keynote speakers and we had pretty extensive training through heroic public speaking. And um, I know I enjoyed the process. I think you did too, right, Christian? I did. It was a laborious, but very rewarding process. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is like what like you see people who are very good public speakers on stage and they make it look so easy and then when you get into it you realize no it is like performing a one one act play you know all by yourself up there on stage and every move and every gesture is choreographed and rehearsed and uh yeah so it's it's a lot of work but it, hopefully it will pay off. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm going to just share your background, Christian. Christian Espinoza is an esteemed thought leader, most known as the best-selling author of The Smartest Person in the Room, which is a book that I have read and enjoyed. Uh, the book explores the limitations of seeking validation through achievement and the desire to be the brightest intellect in any room. With a deep desire to inspire others to harness their innate wisdom, overcome perceived barriers, and summon the courage to tread new paths, Christian authored his latest book, The In-Between, Life in the Micro. And I haven't read that one yet, so I look forward to reading that one, Christian. It comes out next week. All right, awesome. A dynamic entrepreneur, Christian built and successfully sold Alpine Security, a cybersecurity business, and he founded and currently leads Blue Goat Cyber. His expertise extends beyond the confines of the corporate world. He's a white hat hacker, and I actually know what a white hat hacker is because years ago, I worked with a group of students who were learning white hat hacking as part of a school project. <laughs> and I was uh, doing their PR. So that was like in the early 2000s. And just for our listeners, white hat hacking is when you actually try to hack into a website to see if you can hack into it, but you're not doing it because you want to steal all the data in there. You just want to show the client whether or not their site is uh, safe or not, basically. So... Uh, at, anyway, Christian is also a captivating keynote speaker, a perceptive real estate investor, and a connoisseur of heavy metal music and fiery cuisines. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like an all-around guy, <laughs> Christian. He's also spent time in the Mexican jungle with Mayan shamans, is a sea licensed skydiver, and is a PADI dive master. What does PADI stand for? Um, it's an organization for scuba diving. I don't actually know what it stands for. I forgot, but it's for maybe it's, Professional Association of Dive Instructors, something like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever Christian tries, he tends to master. And yeah, he said he was just in Dubai and riding camels. And yeah, so I, I was saying, well, Christian, you really live a big life. And I just love that because I try to do the same thing myself. We only have so much time on this earth, so we might as well live large. <laughs> exactly. So, Christian, tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place. Yeah, it wasn't quite planned out. Uh, I grew up in Arkansas, extreme poverty in a single wide trailer with a drug addicted mother. And I wanted to get out of my environment, so I applied to every 
military academy there was. I ended up going to the Air Force Academy. Um, I saw Top Gun and I wanted to fly jets. Uh, I know that's Navy, but I went to the Air Force Academy. Uh, and then the, my junior year, I was told that they would cut all of our, our, almost all of our pilot slots. So even though I was pilot qualified and that's what I wanted to do, I lost my pilot slot when I graduated and went into communications. So I spent about six years in the, in the military doing communications. And after that, I became a defense contractor. I did cybersecurity, uh, traveled the world, optimizing different military bases and securing their networks from uh, threat actors. And then I went into commercial work. I tested, you talked about white hat hacking earlier. I did testing of aircraft, commercial aircraft, whether in, in the air and on the ground to make sure a passenger couldn't hack into the airplane. And one of the jobs I had, I had a run in with the CEO and it was causing me so much stress and anxiety that I just decided to quit uh, without having anything lined up. And that sort of started me on my own path. So I did freelance work for a while, for about six years. I got bored with that. I was traveling the world, teaching classes, doing hacking. And then I decided to start my company, Alpine Security, that I sold in 2020 to a publicly traded company. And I was with a parent company for a while, and now I have Blue Goat Cyber, which I'm hoping to expedite uh, because I felt like I paid a lot of dumb tax with my first company that, you know, the things you think you know, but you don't know. So now I feel like I can do this new company much smarter and, and scale it a lot faster. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's really interesting that you you seem to have made lemonade out of lemons because you had a tough <laughs> you had a tough upbringing, uh, but then because of your your drive and your focus and your goal orientation, I feel like you've done a lot with your career dis despite the setbacks of uh, you know not being able to pursue flying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think like growing up, I didn't have any stability. It was very chaotic. So I think what I craved was stability and safety. And I, I found that to a large degree in the military. And then what I realized later was I didn't actually like those things as much as I thought I, I did, uh, which is why I went on my own with my own entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, that's interesting too. I do know that the military provides the regimentation and the structure that a lot of people need. <laughs> For sure, yeah. So your book is called The Smartest Person in the Room. How can someone be the smartest person in the room? <laughs> well, my book is about trying not to be the smartest person. In the oh, room. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's really about my entrepreneur journey with my first company, Alpine Security. 99% of the problems I have with my company were because my staff lacked uh, people skills or emotional intelligence. They had super high rational intelligence or high IQ. And in cybersecurity and high tech industries, we have super brilliant people IQ wise. And often they're lacking the people skills or the EQ, emotional intelligence. So I, I worked in my company to instill and infuse some emotional intelligence and people skills into my staff that already had a super high IQ. Because so I figured if I could add some emotional intelligence to my highly rational intelligence staff, it would help my company uh, and help us separate from you know, our competition, basically. Uh, and what worked is what I ended up writing about in the book, uh, the seven steps. Awesome. Do you want to tell us the seven steps or, or do you want people to get the book so they can learn those? <laughs> I give you a quick overview of the seven steps. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first one is awareness. I think everything starts with awareness. You have to be aware of how you interact in the world and how you show up and how others perceive you. And I use uh, neurolinguistic programming. Uh, I, I do some comparisons to that in the book quite a bit. And one of the things we're not often aware of is our brains are very, programmatic. We often think we're very unpredictable, but we're, act we're actually very programmatic. So if we have a trigger, it basically kicks off a program in our brain that runs. And often that program is one that's not serving us. So from an awareness perspective, 
if we can realize that we have this reaction to a trigger and we automatically get upset or we get defensive or whatever the reaction is, if that's not serving us, we need to install a new program, which takes time and is like a muscle over time, it will become the default program. So that's from an awareness perspective. The second step is mindset. Uh, Carol Dweck wrote a book uh, about mindset in comparison to the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. And I'm a proponent of the growth mindset. A lot of us think we're just hardwired. We are the way we are. That is a fixed mindset. But if you adapt a growth mindset, you realize that you have the capability of changing. And then cybersecurity and other high-tech industries, uh, a lot of people will say, I'm just not good with people. That's an example of fixed mindset. And, and my response typically is you you probably have parents, right? Or you have a spouse or children. Like, what would it do if you got better with people? And if they can shift their mindset to a growth mindset, they might start getting better with people. Uh, the third step is acknowledgement. Uh, one of the things I realized as a leader is that I had a hard time acknowledging myself, uh, which meant I had a hard time acknowledging my staff. I remember standing on the standing on the Ironman uh, World Championship finish line in 2005. Uh, I went there for the first time, and I told myself I'd do that race some year, or one year. And 10 years later, in 2015, I finished the race, and for some reason, I was automatically thinking about the next thing I wanted to accomplish. I never, like, took a moment to, like, appreciate or acknowledge that it took me 10 years to do this thing. Uh, step four is communication. I'm a proponent of the meaning of communication is the response you get. So if you're not getting the response you expect or you, you're looking for from somebody, the ownership shifts to you to change how you're communicating. Uh, and we like to you know, blame the other person often versus think, well, maybe I should try saying this or communicating this a different way. Um, and then step five is monotasking. Uh, monotasking is doing one thing at a time. It's the antithesis of multitasking. Multitasking makes you very busy, but not very productive. Monotasking, concentrated focus. So it helps you with productivity. It also helps you with presence. If I'm communicating with somebody and I'm not like thinking about something else or checking my phone, I'm going to be a much better communicator because I'm going to be present. Uh, the, the next step is empathy. I think in our society today, we have a lot of division, uh, a lot of divide. We like to think of other people as separate from us. Like those are the engineers, these are the salespeople, those are the pro-vaccine people, these are the anti-vaxxers, those are the Democrats, Republicans. And when you think of everyone as separate from you or separate from the human condition, it's hard to be empathetic. And then the last step is Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese word that means continuous, and never ending improvement or constant improvement. And I think with any of the steps I just talked about, a lot of us think if we're not good at something with the first step, the first try, then we just, we're just not gonna be good at it, we abandon it. And Kaizen, if you adapt that philosophy, gives you the, the courage to start and also realize that the process is much more important than the outcome. Wow, thanks for that overview. And I think we probably could do a whole episode <laughs> on each of these steps. Um, but we, we are here to talk about PR and personal branding. But I'll just yeah. say that I appreciate that monotasking because, uh, yeah, I have a very busy mind and I do tend to do many things at once. And I think it would help me um, to, to focus on monotasking a bit more. So thank you for the reminder. Um, we all can use help with monotasking. Yeah. <laughs> we, live in, we live in a distraction-filled world. I'll so. say, oh my gosh. You know, I worked in the cellular industry. I handled PR for the company called US Cellular, um, you know, at the advent of cell phones earlier in the 2000s. And I remember the, uh, you know, industry officials predicting or forecasting that the cell phones would eventually kind of like work their ways and work their way into all aspects of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh yeah, right. Because back then we had those bag phones. Do you remember the bag phones that you would plug into your cigarette lighter? 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I mean that's what I was promoting when what in the early 2000s I would like give a bag phone to a nonprofit as a gift from US Cellular and we'd do a big like campaign or ceremony for the media and um I just remember the 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 predictions it was kind of like how we're predicting now how AI is going to change our lives but we didn't really believe it you know we didn't really right. believe that someday people would be walking around like you know, looking at their phones, and, and and sure enough, that's what they are. So, a lot of people now are developing text neck. You know, they they constantly look down on their phones, so their necks are getting messed up. Have you heard of that? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so, Christian, one of the things that I uh, talk about in my keynote speech is the need to build your network in order to build your brand, and that you need to do it both in person and online. And how have you done? both in-person and online networking to build your brand? I do a fair amount of speaking. So that avenue in person, uh, sometimes it's the, the talks are via Zoom. Uh, that helps build my brand. It helps me with networking as well. Uh, and I have started attending events for my new company and networking at those events in person. The other thing I do, which I, I think is important for me is I'm a member of a lot, a lot of different groups. Uh, so there's like, like a mastermind group I'm part of, uh, an entrepreneur group, a uh, veteran group, and we meet online, like usually once a week or once a month, depending on the group. And then we also get together in person, uh, like one of the, the veteran groups I'm with is getting together in Florida later on um, next year, early next year. So I think looking at those different avenues helps me because I when I first started out, I kind of had a me against the world attitude and I did, didn't think I really needed to network. And I realized that you can only get so far alone and a lot of business comes from referrals, not from like, you know, just inbound leads through a, a website's SEO, for instance. Yeah, it's amazing. I went to a networking meeting last night. It was a new group of executives that met um, in my town and it was remarkable just being like being part of that group. I had, I got so many interesting leads just because I was in the room and, and yeah. face to face. And I think the fact that I was included with this group of executives kind of gave me sort of credibility that I wouldn't have had if I just kind of tried to approach any of those people, um, you know, by a cold email or cold phone call. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, good. Um, you've obviously mastered, I feel, the art of networking. And <laughs> I don't know if I mastered it. I'm, <laughs> I think mastery is a journey. I don't think we ever quite mastered anything, but I'm, I'm still improving. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I enjoyed networking with you when I met you uh, again in Lambertville, New Jersey last year. So. <laughs> yeah. And now you mentioned uh, veterans groups. Um, what lessons did you learn while in the military that you apply in your business now? Uh, there's a few, few lessons. I think one of them is from the military is discipline equals freedom. Uh, and it's a little bit counterintuitive because we think if we're free, we can just do whatever we want. But the bottom line is if you're disciplined and do something, let's say you have to make 50 cold calls, you do the 50 cold calls every day, then ultimately you have more freedom because you end up getting better at cold calling and you generate more revenue because you have more sales. So it's, I think it's important to be disciplined uh, and, and that helps you improve with things. The other thing is teamwork. Uh, in the military, we do things as a team. And I think it's important to have the right team, the right seats on the bus, as people like to say, and, all, and to be headed in the right direction. So teamwork is extremely important when you're trying to build a, a business and have a shared vision that you want people to get behind. And I would say the third thing, I, I went through survival, evasion, resistance, and escape training, Siri in the military. And that gave, gave us a different perspective because you're in a, like a mock prisoner of war camp. You're starving to death kind of out there in the, in the woods. So I think it gives you the perspective that Attitude is really important, especially with as an entrepreneur and someone trying to build a business. There's going to be ups and downs, 
And you have to have a positive attitude and realize that those valleys you're going through are temporary. And if you let the valleys like take you under, then you're, you're going to give up when you're super close to like the outcome or the next peak you're going to get over. Uh, so that's one of the things I learned from the military as well. The, the, the value of having a, a, a positive attitude despite difficult circumstances. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Absolutely. I would also think that loyalty would be something that, I mean, people in the military are loyal, you know, whether you're in the Marines or the army or Navy or air force um, and, and the pride that they feel, I would think that that would transfer over to business as well. For sure. Like I, my teams have been, uh, I've been fortunate enough to build uh, teams that are loyal to me. Like my teammates from my first company, a lot of them are working for me now in my second company. And I think that's, you know, from a, it's humbling that they're willing to kind of go where I go. Yeah, I feel the same way about my team. Yes, uh, we had a we had a holiday gathering yesterday, and I'm just so grateful for them. It's just like, <laughs> it's it, it's it's if you show gratitude too, uh, you know, and don't try to act like because you're the business owner, it's all all because of your own hard work, but it's because of the teamwork. Then I think that that goes a long way. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Well. Christian, we're going to take a short break. I want to remind everybody in PR Maven Nation that they can get the first chapter of my book, Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, by going to prmaven.com slash giveaway. And you can sign up for my email list to receive the first chapter of my book. And we're going to watch a little video now from our friends at Sprague and Curtis Real Estate. And we'll be back with more from Christian in just a moment. Sprague & Curtis is a locally owned real estate company. We're primarily focused in central Maine. Uh, I got excited about Nancy's book because she's so well known in the area for her marketing and branding techniques and uh, we're always looking to expand and learn and grow and um, so a lot of us here at the office decided that we wanted to uh, read her book and learn some new techniques. It benefits Sprague & Curtis to have a large brand and audience um, because there can often be uh, multiple years between transactions with clients, um, so it's important to network them with them and, and stay in touch with them in those in-between periods. And this book really helped us uh, learn some techniques and methods to, to continue to do that. We organized a small book group with Nancy's book uh, with brokers in our office this winter to share information and remind ourselves how important it is to always be working on our network and continually reaching out to our customers. Platforms like social media are important in expanding your business, but equally as important are handwritten notes, cards, letters. She inspired me to send her a note of appreciation, just thanking her for the book and her insight. In reading Nancy's book, I was excited to look to continue to grow our brand and our audience. I think she does a great job of um, motivating us. Nancy's book really helped me learn a few things in marketing and branding and how important it is to stay on top of reaching out to clients periodically, staying top of mind, providing useful information, and, and really telling our story as a company. I want to thank our friends at Sprague and Curtis for that nice uh, video. It always makes me smile when they see that they, they had these like old fashioned potluck luncheons where they'd talk about my book and they had all the casserole dishes on the table with the gingham tablecloth and just <laughs> so mean actually. <laughs> so, so Christian, what inspired you to become a keynote speaker? I want to get my message out. Uh, you know, in a different medium. I, I know there's a book, there's speaking, there's different platforms. And I feel like speaking is a way where you can really, if you do it the right way, uh, touch somebody and help them transform. Uh, I've been a big proponent of TED Talks. I've, I've watched a lot of TED Talks. I've attended TED. And I think it's true, like the, the power of uh, a speech, a speech has the power to change the world. And I feel like if I can get better at, at speaking, 
and clarify my message, then I can, you know, change the world one person at a time in a positive manner. That's awesome. It, that is the tagline of heroic public speaking, right? To change the world one speech at a time. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So what is the theme of your keynote speeches? My, there's a centralized theme with any of them I've done, and it's really about leadership, but I, I would say it's more focused on self leadership. I think leadership starts with yourself. Often when people think of leadership, they think of like leading other people. But the, at the end of the day, if you're good at leading yourself through difficult times, to be in discipline, through monotasking, then I think you can achieve much more than you think you're capable of. And ultimately, through through any of my talks, there's a common theme where I, I believe we all have innate wisdom within ourselves. We know what to do. We know what we want to do. But we've got all this stuff that kind of blocks it. So I want to help people uncover that, overcome any barriers they think they have, and then ultimately develop the courage to tread a new path. I think a lot of people get stuck in a life they don't really feel is, is propelling them forward or is it really contributing uh, to the world? And I hope to help people unlock that potential as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I hope to be in the audience for one of your speeches one of these days. <laughs> Um, how have you used speaking and writing books as a way to position yourself as a thought leader? When I wrote the first book, I was pretty nervous about doing it um, because I think as being a thought leader, you need to go not really necessarily against the grain, but your message needs to be unique and a little bit different and authentic. And my first book, uh, The Smartest Person in the Room, was really about like the elephant in the room that nobody talked about in cybersecurity, the, the lack of people skills with high IQ people. Everybody was used to talking about the next framework, the next um, technology, or all these things that don't really matter in my opinion. So I thought to position myself as a thought leader, I need to do something a little bit different and, and state my message, uh, no matter what the, uh, the feedback may be because I was pretty concerned about publishing the book, how it would be received. It's, fortunately, it's been received pretty well. Uh, so I think the book and, and also going through the writing the book itself helped me clarify my message and my thought process and helped me transform myself. I think that and then aligning the talk with my book was kind of my method. I have a book, a talk like my next book, The In Between Life and the Micro. I have a talk that aligns with that as well, but the overall theme, like I mentioned before, is leadership, but it's a specific type of, uh, of focus is really what I'm getting at. Yeah. Well, definitely the whole thought leadership um, path is something that you seem to have pursued. And um, I feel like you've done a great job of it to, to you know, to, to be constantly thinking about you know, how you can communicate your message through content creation. And um, it also could be called authority marketing, what you're doing, uh, positioning mm -hmm. yourself as an authority. So uh, how have you used public relations techniques to promote yourself and your business? I think one of the biggest things I've done is try to get clarity on my message and my audience um, and then speak through my message in a way that resonates with the audience. When I first started doing marketing or PR, I thought like with my first cybersecurity company, I could just market to everybody. And what I realized is I'm marketing to nobody if I'm trying to market to everybody because I don't really understand the details of someone's uh, pain points. So I, I, I switched that and have really gone through a lot of frameworks of trying to understand how to position myself as a guide uh, versus a hero in someone's journey uh, to cross a chasm. Most people have a chasm they're trying to cross and I'm trying to provide that bridge, but I'm not the hero. They're the hero in the story. And I'm trying to position myself as a guide to help them across that chasm. And, and any message I give out um, or any message I'm conveying 
about my company or my personal brand. And that ties into the PR ultimately. Uh, and I think it's important to look at things from that perspective. Yeah, I think you're spot on about really targeting your audience and helping them, you know, to solve whatever problem it is that's keeping them up at night. And you're absolutely correct that there's hardly any brand in the world that is is designed to for everybody, you know. And right. and it, you're so right if uh if you do try to solve everybody's problems, you're not going to solve anybody's. So that's good. Yeah. Um what is a book, an app, or a podcast that has been helpful to you and why? I think what's been pretty helpful for me in clarifying my thoughts and my message is uh, otter.ai. I have it on my phone and it, it sounds silly, but uh, a lot of time I'll, I'll, I'll walk, go for a walk, and I'll just talk to myself, but record it in otter and it's amazing when you vocalize your thoughts you quickly realize the gaps there are uh and you might actually not think of something the, the way you're vocalizing it. it may be a little bit different so you you, you and i think otter ai because it, it does um speech to text helps you or helps me at least clarify a lot of that and then i have the notes of what i uh spoke about and i can turn that into a, um, a blog or some piece of content later, and then also use it as just a reference of all my notes for my next book, for instance. So is Otter AI, is that artificial intelligence? Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit of artificial intelligence. I mean, it's got the dot AI at the end of it, but it, it takes, I think the theory is it, it learns your speech pattern over time and then gets better at translating uh, your speech to text. Yeah. So I guess it could be considered AI. So when you, you're you out walking and you have a thought, you start talking into your phone to, to record your thought, and then it, it creates a file so you can refer back to it later? That's correct. Yeah. Or when I'm driving. I do it when I'm driving a lot too. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because I- Yeah. Have... Especially if I'm like- writing a new book or there's something I'm unclear about or something I want to put in the book. Uh, like this next book, I want to do my third book is about um, surviving versus thriving. So I've got like the big concepts, but I don't have the specific things narrowed down. So it's if, if I can discuss it and then record it with Otter AI on my phone, it helps me get clarity in my messaging and helps me like realize where I'm lacking and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, I think the other virtue of that having a way to capture your thoughts is like you might be driving or walking and and some anecdote will come to your mind, like something from your childhood, or you might remember an encounter that you had with a a waitress at a restaurant or or whatever. And you it's like, yeah. oh, that perfectly illustrates the point I was trying to make, but I just need to capture it. So um, I think that would be useful for me too. Also, how about when you think of things in the middle of the night? Does that happen for you? It does sometimes, and I'll wake up and record it. I know um, my favorite band, uh, Nightwish, the guy that writes all those songs, he has a, a recorder by his bed, and he, he dreams most of the songs and wakes up and just speaks it into the, in the recorder, and the, those become like the songs of the band. So I think you know messages come to us while we're on a walk, while we're dreaming or whatever. And I think it's it's a good to have a way to capture those. Yes. I think that's so amazing that their band is called Nightwish and he thinks of the songs in the night. <laughs> you know, you know, ironically, I never thought of it from that perspective, but that might be why the band is called Nightwish. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when I go to bed tonight, I'm gonna wish that I have a song that's gonna like Taylor Swift is gonna perform or something. <laughs> Maybe that will come to me in the night tonight. <laughs> Just get just get it ready to record as soon as you wake up. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll get it. I'll get Taylor Swift's email and say, Hey Taylor, I thought of a song. <laughs> it's my <laughs> wish that you record it today. It's gotta be about a breakup though. All of her songs are about breakups, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but not with Travis Kelsey. That's gonna be like, boy, if that ever happens, that's really gonna be in the news. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> That's for another day. <laughs> I have heard some news people say that she shouldn't talk so much about her relationship because then if it ever ends, it's going to be even more <laughs> prominent in the news. But anyway, we don't we don't need to talk about Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christian, how can people get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me on my website, ChristianEspinoza.com. Uh, my email is on there as well. My social media links are on the website. Or my company website, BlueGoatCyber.com. And I'm on pretty much every social media as well. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I know that you, I know you're responsive when uh, people reach out. So I appreciate that. And I've really enjoyed our conversation today. I hope we can do it again sometime. Yeah, for sure. It's been awesome, Nancy. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Christian. I hope you have a great day and I hope everybody in PR Maven Nation has a great day as well. Thanks for listening to this episode of the PR Maven podcast. I invite you to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation on Facebook. It's free to join and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you use an Alexa device, use your Alexa app to search the skills and games section to find and enable the PR Maven podcast flash briefing. This will give you access to exclusive content and more PR and marketing advice. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.